Winter fishing in Florida can be beautiful. Blue skies, clear water, and comfortable weather. This year's winter fishing hasn't been any of those things. Why do you look so sad? I just spent three days fishing in rainy, miserable conditions. I was chasing a giant from one of the world's most chaotic jetties. Tons of species in a bonus bridge session make this video one to remember. So kick back, relax, and be happy you didn't have to join me in the rain. What is going on guys? It's been a minute. Happy New Year, 2024. First video that I'm officially filming in 2024. And we are gonna do a little bit of land-based fishing. Got a bucket full of shrimp, a cart full of junk, and I'm here with my man Ryan. What's up? And we're gonna hopefully catch some fish. It's been pouring rain, rain just stopped. You guys look, it's flooded everywhere. Um, hopefully the rains stay away or the rain turns the fish on, and hopefully we catch a couple fish. Whoa, dude, you got your waders on. <laughs> oh, dude, he's so on. Go got him. <laughs> he's so on. We were going to go all the way out to the end, but the minute we walk up, saw a kid hook up, pulling a nice black drum, so I'm gonna hook on a live shrimp, see if we can get something. All right, the rain is starting but I'm gonna, I still have to rig up. I'm gonna rig up with some of this 30 pound fluorocarbon. This is made by Ocean Devil. I'm gonna tie up, I got 20 pound Silk Ocean Braid or like PE2. Sorry, it's not 20 pound, it's PE2. I actually tests a lot higher than 20 pound. And that is why I like it so much. I'm just gonna splice some of the fluorocarbon on there and get rigged up. Also going to rig up with one of these BKK Octopus Beak Hooks, size two. You guys know I love my BKK hooks. This lighter hook is going to be used to fish a live shrimp, and the live shrimp definitely have a better presentation when you have a smaller, lighter wire hook like this one on them. They present better. And since I'm only fishing 30 pound fluorocarbon, I don't need super heavy gauge steel on the hooks, so that's why I'm going with this guy. Alrighty, let's go on in here and grab us a nice live. I'm gonna hook this guy through the horn with that little number two BKK. Right back out, that's the hard part of the shrimp. Hook stays in there pretty good. And as long as there's no bait snatchers, it's not gonna rip out of him. So again, super simple rig. Just got that heavy split shot, it's like a half ounce. 30 pound leader, small hook, live shrimp. You cast it that way a little bit. First time fishing this rod it's by Ocean Devil Kingslayer. Kind of like a plug rod, but I think it's gonna work perfect for fishing these lighter live shrimp. There we go. Hooked up. Woo! Got one. We got one. Ate the live shrimp. Woo! Oh, in that whitewash. Alrighty, boys, y'all ready for this? And girls, boys and girls. Y'all get mad at me when I say that. Flip them up. Oh! We got us one. Oh! And our hook just came out right there. These guys have to be between 14 and 24 inches to keep, and you're allowed to keep one over that. You're allowed five per day. So we're gonna take them and measure them here on the cart. We've got zero pinch tail. We are at 17 and a half. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but that is a keeper black drum. That's what we came here for. Check them out, guys. Beautiful black drum, keeper size. You know when they're small, they get these vertical stripes that you can see, which is very, very pretty. And when they're small like this, they are delicious. But what's crazy about this species is they can get like 70 pounds. They can get giant. I caught like a 30 pounder here last year or a couple years ago, that's my biggest ever. But I definitely wanna get a true giant one day. Happy to get this guy, he's delicious. He's gonna go in the cooler. Man, stoked, catch a couple more. We got us another live shrimp. Hook just through the horn, just like the last one. Let's see if we can repeat that. Maybe upgrade our size just a little bit. Happy to have that one in the cooler. I definitely want one more to bring home. And then we're maybe 
doing a little bit of fun fishing. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Nice to meet you. I'm Ryan. Gotta warm up. Oh, just like that. Oh, we got us a little baby redfish. I'll tell you what, fishing in the rain isn't ideal for filming, but for catching fish, the fish seem to be chewing. We have a beautiful little redfish, very blue on the tail. Very cool, man. He's actually got a little parasite on him that I'm going to take off, pull that out of him. This guy is way too small, and uh, we're letting him go even if he was in season and he was legal, but we're letting this one go. It's really, really good weather out here. Really ideal weather. This is exactly what you want to be fishing in all the time. Just loving it. <laughs> And what's crazy is the end is still loaded with people. Literally, there's still like 20 people fishing the end, trying to catch some of the bigger black drum that are out there. I'm probably gonna join them, but man, fishermen are crazy. Go. Oh, <laughs> Set the hook. Oh! Oh, we gotta wipe it down. Wipe it down. My man is on. My man is met the legend. Good work. Catch him up. Oh! Oh! Another one. Another pretty, pretty red. Oh, the rain's getting nice and hard now. That hurt. Another pretty, pretty Florida redfish from land. Smoked the live shrimp. Out of season, can't keep him. He also bit the crap out of me, so uh, he got his back at me. <laughs> Give me that thing. Got the hook out. We're gonna let him go. Wow, it is pouring now. What up, bro? Nice. Oh, sorry, I'm all slimy. Yeah, all good. What's your name? Good stuff, Mont. Nice Mont? to meet you, Mont. Yeah, yeah. Why do you look so sad? <laughs> Beautiful weather. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> so it seemed like the longer we fished down here in the surf, the less bites we were getting. But it also seemed like more and more people were leaving the end, which gave me some hopes that, you know, the cleared out end, it was me able to find some fish. These two young anglers came to say what's up, even in the rain, they had been catching fish all day long. But again, put in a couple hours and the fish just kind of started to chill out in the surf. So we decided after, you know, hour two, it was time to pack it up, move out to the end, see if we could find some bigger fish. All right, let's let this guy drift out a little bit. Ryan just got bit right away. There we go. Pelicans are diving on them. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Whoa, we got a little baby shark bait. We got us a little baby bluefish. Slimy little SOB. 100% cut you off with them teeth. He's got sharper teeth than a lot of fish. They're a real small one. 
It's actually make great bait for a lot of things. Kingfish would smoke this thing. We're gonna let this guy go though. So Ryan said a grouper just tried to grab this thing. I didn't believe him, but then he showed me and a grouper, like a Goliath, tried to literally grab this black drum and just scaled him. It's got the 10 BKK all around her. Sizing up my shrimp, going a little bit bigger, a little heavier setup. Got a two ounce egg sinker now. Fishing out here at the end. Let's see if we can get a bite. My man just hooked a snook. Bought it all the way back on the light rod. Nice, dude. My man Ryan just got himself a nice snook. Did not expect that today. That would have been a beautiful slot in season. Probably. Dude. Eight pound braid. Yeah. <laughs> light gear. 30 pound leader. Beautiful. Ryan said he caught a fish or caught that snook on two shrimp at once. So I'm going to try two shrimp at once. Looks super goofy. I think it's a very unnatural presentation, but who knows? Maybe it'll just be like beating each other up, making a bunch of noise, and someone will eat it. So fish in the end here is really just organized chaos because a bunch of guys are trying to fish very similar spot and very similar area with, you know, everyone's got a rod or two. So everyone has to work around each other, get over, under, and, you know, once you do get tangled, you really can't get frustrated because that's just the nature of fishing in a spot like this. It's just part of the game, so everyone's got to work together. There he is. There, he is. there we go. That's him. There we go. We are tight. I hate the dead shrimp. Just had a chunk of dead on. Picked it up. Real slow pickup. Ooh, angry fish. Angry fish. Um, I could net him. Flip them. Flip them. Flip. Thanks, bro. Flip it or die. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Almost lost him. <laughs> that would have been some shit, right? On the camera. And <laughs> there we go. Just a beautiful little specimen. You guys check out the underside of their chin. They got these little tentacles here. They use that to feel around, help them find baits. And they are also very scent oriented. So stinky baits, a lot of times, stinky dead baits, work very, very well. I already have two in the cooler, so I'm gonna let this guy go. Still looking for that giant today, but man, awesome little fish. <laughs> it's cold, it's rainy, a little miserable out here, but we're getting it done, finding some fish, and uh, yeah, it's just a part of it. It's uh, not always gonna be beautiful out here when you're trying to catch stuff. There we go. Got him on, y'all. Ate the live shrimp this time. I ate them that time. Ooh, coming in. Coming in hot. Hauling butt in. Hauling butt in. This thing's swimming fast for a black drum. Ooh, he's just pissed. He's just pissed. Yeah. Drum, oh, sorry, bro. That was me. Beautiful little golden one. Yo, you want this? Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Bear hug it. <laughs> sorry. Okay, that is enough of being cold being wet for this afternoon however i think i want to fish tomorrow morning i think i want to still try and catch one of those really big fish so ryan is the only reason that i got out here so thank you appreciate it you're not fishing tomorrow though are you working no, I gotta work. all right well i'm gonna be back out here tomorrow morning early i will see you guys then good morning y'all not sure how well you can hear me let me know got a new mic on the camera really really windy out here so this is some tough conditions for it to be in but we're back 
for another session. And you know what? It's not raining. Still head to toe rain gear because it's windy and I'm a little cold. I get it. Don't come at me, Northeast guys. It's colder where you live and you're sad that you're not fishing. But anyways, we are back trying to catch one of them bigger drum, one of those big black drum that live here. Now, there haven't been the giants. These things get up to 60, 70 pounds, but there have been some quality fish up to like 30, 40 inches. And you never know when you're fishing places like this, what could swim by, what you could catch. So I'm gonna keep pushing. I don't know if any of my shrimp are alive. My shrimp made it. Um, we will see because I tried to keep them alive through the night on a bubbler. That water's probably all gross, but got like two, three hours before the rain starts again. So let's get to fishing. Let's see if any of these shrimp Still alive? Oh, we got some live ones still. That's good. Surprisingly, they stayed alive through the night. Same thing we were doing yesterday. Just put the little BKK right through underneath the horn, through that hard part of the shell. And he can just flick, freak out and be all upset with me. But he's got a hook. And it shouldn't come out unless anything crazy happens. And looks like everyone's fishing over on this side. So I'm actually gonna try the drift. We're at like the end of the outgoing tide. So I'm gonna cast out and just kind of like let this shrimp drift naturally. See if anything, anything's hanging out. That split shot that I got won't sink it to the bottom in this current really until you get to the eddy. So just slowly let it drift naturally with the current set up like a shrimp getting flushed out the inlet wood. Drift was not working, but there might be some fish over here. I will tell you guys what, this did not feel like my morning. I was watching tons of people doing the same thing as me, catching a decent amount of black drum. Now there was no real big ones, but dude, I couldn't buy a bite for my life for like at least two hours or so. I just kind of snagged the bottom, lost shrimp, got pecked off. Just wasn't my morning. There we go, hooked up. Something picked up the shrimp finally. Not a very big one. Might be the smallest one I've seen all day. That is an adorable little fella. Shoo. Oh, you're cute. Fish feel a little colder than yesterday too. They are, you know, this water's cold in the winter time, but that is a pretty one. He's actually a little beat up. Got those classic vertical stripes on them. From nice little specimen. Crazy that this same fish could be 70 pounds one day. But we're gonna let him go. Maybe he will grow that big. So something different that I did on the last one after I hooked my shrimp on is it was still alive. And I actually just kind of plucked the tail off. Get some scent going. And then it has that tail. But he's still gonna live like that. Maybe that drum really, really will like him with a little bit of scent. Or last time, maybe. There we go. Not very big, whatever it is. Guess I attract the dinks. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is what I wanted. You want a kiss from him? Right. I'll give you a catfish kiss. You seen the video of a couple drunk dudes on a boat and they just like one buddy just swings a catfish and hits his friend in the back like oh, just bare really? back it just sticks it, it just stuck yeah, in him <laughs> well sometimes the ugly girls show up too but luckily that one unhooked herself Got us a little baby fat snook. <laughs> That's not the normal common snook that you guys are used to seeing. This, I believe, is a little baby fat snook. Slightly different. Beautiful little specimen. They don't get nearly as big as the normal common snook. But still fun. Still a pretty little fish. Awesome. He, uh, he wanted a little live shrimp action. Beautiful. One more look for you guys, and we'll send him on his way. And even that little guy frayed me up big time. That's a big thing with snook, is they're going to fray your leader, so you have to retie 
pretty much between every bite that you get, not even every fish that you catch, because even when they pop your shrimp, they're gonna fray you later. All right, so I just hooked on one of our bigger shrimp. This guy is ready to go. There we go. Oh man, what do we got? I think we got a pompano. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got a pompano. Thing's fighting like a crackhead. Look at that thing. It's a good one. Get him over. Woo! Look at that. And check that out, y'all. Pompano got the BKK hook right in the bottom of his mouth. Unhook that guy. He smoked the live shrimp. When these guys get hooked, it usually get hooked pretty good. That's a, that's a pretty nice pomp. Definitely stoked to catch that guy. Add it to the cooler. Add it to the list of species that we caught in this video. And again, it's raining. Seems so part for the course for this video. But still fish out here, man. Still fish being caught. So that's pretty sweet. I'm gonna bleed this guy and then I'm gonna throw him in the cooler. So the rain is forecasted to start dumping in the next like 20 minutes. It's about all the time I also have, free time at least for today. So we got plenty of fish in the cooler. Definitely gonna have a catch and cook. But my goal for this video was to at least catch one nice big old drum. So I'm still gonna try and do that. But the thing is, is I don't know how. Definitely gonna come fish here when I have the chance, but I'm also gonna call up a couple people, see if I can find something out about where those bigger fish are hiding, because I just really haven't seen a real giant here, at least in the last couple of days. Well, hey, good morning, guys. It is officially session number three, day three. Um, still really looking for one of those bigger black drum, but one way or another, we're making this video happen. We're making a video no matter what we catch. And got two plans for today. So I'm back on the jetty, headed out. Got a bunch of new baits, some live shrimp, some dead shrimp, some dead clams, some crabs. We're gonna spend the morning session out here on the jetty. After that, this afternoon, I'm actually gonna hop on a local captain's boat and we're gonna go try and catch some black drum underneath the bridge. Now this dude's never done this before i've convinced him i'm like hey man i know it's not your normal charter system not your normal charters but let's go try this we're just gonna go try it out and i'll take you guys along for the ride but first let's hit up these fish out here on the jetty maybe we can pop a big one just to start the day no rain scheduled for today which is really good so i got high hopes hopefully these baits do their job I will save you guys the pain and just basically summarize what we did on this morning. So basically there were little jacks everywhere. Just little jack after little jack on, on pretty much whatever bait I threw out. Live, dead, a mixture of clams, a mixture of sand fleas. I tried shrimp and clam, fish bites. I was trying to do a little bit of anything to get away from these jacks and I just couldn't trying my best to you know do use all the best baits that i know guys catch black drum on but it just wasn't happening the one highlight of the morning was ryan hooked up on a live shrimp on his light rod and it and it ended up being a really nice snook which i'm dropping the bridge net here for now these fish are out of season um that's why they haven't been keeping them or people can't keep them this time of year and this particular one would have been perfectly in slot if it were seasoned for these fish. But because they're not, we gotta release it, send it back, and hopefully catch one like that when the season opens up. So this side was really not happening today. Uh, Ryan got that one snook and he got one drum. I caught Jax. Jackson. And Jackson lost a mackerel. But we're gonna go try the other side and then hopping on the boat again this afternoon or not again, but hopping on the boat this afternoon, try and find something. So stick around, something's coming. I got a feeling. Long story short, the south side sucked as bad as the north side. So we got some lunch and then we met up with Captain Greg Barrow at one of our local boat ramps. Okay, so we struck out on the jetty. Ryan again caught a snook and a black drum 
and a little bit of everything. I just got jacks because I suck, I guess. But my man Greg here, Captain Greg Barrow, Snookside Fishing Charter said, you know what, man, I'll take you out. I don't normally do this. I don't normally fish for black drum, but I'll help you try and catch one. So that's what we're doing today. Give it we're, a shot. we're here uh, in the Indian River, so we're gonna look for them. Greg normally does snook fishing, redfish, pretty much everything you would want at Sebastian Inlet, right? Yeah. So if you ever want to fish with Greg and Sebastian Inlet, all of his stuff's linked below. Hopefully we get on something today. Should be able to. It's kind of funny. We're actually fishing after fishing on the jetty. So I actually got my pier rod, like nine foot bottom rod or nine foot spinning rod, big old bottom rod, a little bit long, but we're gonna make it work because that's what we got today. And uh, we're always gonna try and make it happen one way, one way or another. So we pulled up to this bridge where we thought there could be some fish hiding. We drove around and marked the bottom until we found what we thought might be some fish. Marked tons of bait and other stuff, but when we finally saw a couple of the right looking marks, that's when we finally decided to drop some baits. Got this big old blue grab here. Super dark, must've been caught really far up river. But I'm gonna cut this guy in half and use him as bait because if we use him whole, he's not gonna have a whole lot of stink to him. We want something big, stinky, that's gonna get one of those black drum interested enough in eating. And take him, flip him onto our fancy cutting board here, which is actually a five gallon bucket. Rip off that little guy, and just take a knife, crack him in half. Bang. Oh yeah, that's gonna be gnarly. Nice and juicy. Have our half of our crab, 4-0 BKK, that's the Haku live bait hook. I'm just gonna hook him on the underside. This is kind of where the meat is. So when crustacean eating fish choke in a crab, they typically will eat this bottom portion and then spit out that top portion. So I wanna hook in to the meaty part of the fish or meaty part of the crab. Got this on a bottom rig and I'm just gonna cast it where we think the fish might be sitting. Now you notice I'm fishing a big heavy bottom rod, some monofilament top shot. That's because we're fishing around cover and a lot of these fish are giant. They could be 40, 50 pounds, and they want to take you right into that cover and break you off. So, but sizing up the tackle because this might buy, it might be a very short, intense fight. So we want to have the big guns out. Something's pecking at it. It was something kind of pecking at it. Yeah. I literally have nothing. Huh? I have nothing. Just legs. So after a couple more crabs got just chewed alive by pinfish, we decided to move away from this spot and go just check out a couple different areas. Well, those areas didn't actually end up panning out. So after, you know, driving around kind of aimlessly, checking those areas, we ended up exactly where we started fishing that same mark that we thought might be some big fish. After some time, I really just started thinking that it wasn't going to happen. I thought we kind of came out here for nothing. And after, you know, almost giving up, I started to feel something start moving. Outside of, outside of that area that's a sanctuary. Here. Getting nibbled. Getting nibbled for sure. There we go. That's a fish. That's a fish. Oh boy, we got a big one. We got a big one. Woo! Oh man. You got him out. You got the yeah, we got him out. We got him out. Oh, yeah. That's what we wanted. That is it. Oh, it's oh, a big it's red. red, dude. Sick. Dude, look how beat up that thing is. Yeah. 
Dude, look at that thing. It's a zombie fish. Oh my god, that is a zombie redfish. So green. What the heck? Oh man, that thing's crap. Bro. Eric Goliath tried to eat him or something. Dude, that thing is all janky. That's what we're marking now. What the heck? Beautiful zombie redfish. We don't really know what happened to this thing. Goliath grouper truck could maybe have tried to eat it. Dolphin maybe tried to eat it. Just a wild looking redfish, red drum. Same species as the black drum that we've been catching in this video, but another crab eater. Awesome big one. Let's put him back in the water. Oh, just slide right here. Oh, man. So I wanted to try and release that fish nicely. He did not want to be released nicely. He just smacked me around and threw himself back in the water. Oh. So the rest of the afternoon proved to be pretty uneventful. Didn't really get any other significant bites. And this left me kind of bummed because I always like to achieve the goal that I set out for myself when I'm making these videos. Um, but at the end of the day, sometimes you just gotta make what you got. So I hope you guys appreciated how much effort went into trying to catch one of those big black drum, because trust me, I know I'm gonna be back with a vengeance the next time I go after these things. We packed it all up and headed home, and I was super excited because I had a big package come in that I have to share with you guys. So welcome back to the house. I have a big announcement for you guys, and I'm gonna start it by kind of telling you guys a story and you know, unstack these so they don't fall over. So about two years ago, I walked into one of my local tackle shops and I was trying to spool up one of my reels to go slow pitch jigging. The owner changed my mind. He convinced me to use this new line that I had never heard of because of how thin it was and how strong it was for its diameter. Went out, used it, and I really liked it. Fast forward a couple months later, that same braid company, that same line company, reached out to me on Instagram and said, hey man, like what you're making, and I would love for you to try some of my products. I said, hey, I've already tried at least one of the products. I've already tried a little bit of the slow pitch braid. I'd love to try more. So for over a year, I've been using these braids on a lot of my reels on a lot of trips. From my trip to Mexico, where I caught my biggest tuna of my entire life, 200 pound yellowfin. Trips to Panama, where I caught my biggest rooster fish of all time and tons of other species. And pretty much every trip that I've been on that's been like a crazy awesome fish in the past year has been caught on this braid, which has just been absolutely incredible. The braid is called Silk Ocean. So you guys can see right here, this is the Silk Ocean casting braid. And it's been phenomenal. These braids are made in Japan. They're one of the highest quality products that I have used. And just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about some of the benefits of it and kind of, and also announce to you guys that I'm gonna be partnering with them for the year. So Silk Ocean braids, kind of what sets them apart from other braids is it's a really premium product. What that means is it's thinner, smoother, casts further, and is stronger on a strength to diameter ratio than other braids. So take a braid that I used growing up a lot and caught a lot of fish on, like Power Pro. 50 pound Power Pro has a diameter of 0.32. I believe I'm right on that, I'm flashing it up on the screen. PE4 Silk Ocean breaks at, no, actually comparable is PE5. PE5 Silk Ocean has a 0.33 millimeter diameter, so very similar diameter. Well, this Silk Ocean PE5 breaks at 83 pounds compared to 40 pound Power Pro. That is a huge difference with the pretty much the exact same diameter. And once you guys feel these braids, you get these braids in your hands, you're going to see, you're gonna feel the difference. This is an eight weave braid, which isn't completely unique to the fishing industry, but if you haven't fished an eight weave braid or an eight carrier braid like this, it feels amazing. It's silky smooth in your hands. It's not rough at all. And you can understand why there's a lot less friction going through the guides, allowing you to cast a lot further. So Silk Ocean makes braids in pretty much every size. If you guys are unfamiliar with PE sizes, essentially that's just describing the diameter. In Japan and Australia, they use PE to describe their braids for a universal size ratio. So everyone understands what size braid you're fishing. Whereas here in the United States, we use pounds 
and I don't really think that's the best way to describe braids because a lot of braids don't actually break at those pounds and a lot of those braids have wildly different diameters. So while one, one braid you can fit 300 yards of 50 pound, another braid you might be able to fit 400 yards of 50 pound. So it's just kind of hard to tell what you're using. The PE system is something that you will get used to over time. Essentially, all that I do for most cases is if I used 40 pound braid typically on this setup, I'm just putting PE4 on there. You can go higher or lower, whether you're wanting more strength, whatever, but that's like the general rule for, from what I've used in the past and it's worked pretty well for me. So the braids are all under the name Silk Ocean. Now that's the sub brand, the overarching brand is called Ocean Devil. Ocean Devil also makes some rods, which I've been testing out and I'm super stoked to test the entire line over the next year. But this is one of the first ones that I'm gonna show you guys. This is called the King Slayer. It's rated PE15 to PE3 like kind of like a 15 to 30 pound blank. I'm fishing a 5K Stratic with some PE2 on there. This combo balances beautifully. This is something that I would use Sebastian Inlet for throwing live shrimp. I'd also use it to throw like a size 12 x wrap. I'd also use it to just kind of mess around if I needed something to throw lighter spoons, lighter diamond jigs for bluefish and stuff like that. Just a great all around rod to have. You could fish live bait on it. You could fish like little live pilchards pitching to snook. Just absolutely super fun rod and detaches at the butt which is great for storage for those of you that might not be able to keep a 7.6 rod or if you like me and you travel next up is the diablo line so these are one of the top of the line rods on the market for tuna popping this one right here is one of the lighter models this is the eight foot three 150. <clears throat> this i paired with the saltiga 14,000. Going to be fishing PE5 on this setup for longer casts, but this rod I'm super stoked to use, have not used it yet, but I'm going to be using it in two weeks, hopefully catching some monster tunas on it. I have talked to many captains here in Florida that have used these rods and they absolutely love them. Their clients have been beating the crap out of them and the rods are performing flawlessly. Next up, similar setup. This is another Diablo rod. This is the 220. So this is a little bit stiffer, maybe throw, made for throwing bigger, heavier poppers, heavier lures. I'm gonna be fishing Twin Power 14,000 on this with PE6, and I'll just be throwing real big, heavy poppers on this one, especially when it's a little bit rougher out and you need to get that bigger popper that's just not gonna foul itself when you're casting. This is gonna be the setup. This has been loved by guys like Dennis Farid over in Australia. Awesome rod that I'm really excited to use. Now, we have the big boy. This is the Diablo Beast. Seven foot four, so a little bit shorter of a rod rated for literally PE 10 to infinity. I, I think it's PE 10 to 12, but you're not gonna be able to max out this rod um, if you're a normal sized human like me. I'm fishing a Saltiga 20,000 on this with PE 8 Silk Ocean on it. And this is what I'm gonna use for throwing big soft plastics like the NLBN eight inches with the tuna hooks on them. This is gonna be a prime setup for that. So when you don't have to cast this far, maybe the tunas are sitting down deep, a little bit shorter of a rod, gonna be an easier fight man i what i really want to do is i want to put the drag as tight as it goes and just see how much pressure i can put on a big tuna so ocean devil and myself are going to be partnered together for this upcoming year and hopefully much further into the future i'm going to be using these braids on all of my setups using the rods on my tuna trips and on other trips throughout the rest of the year and i'm very stoked to be working with them because the fishing industry is a weird one y'all there's tons of companies out there and there's tons of companies willing to send you free stuff and get you to use their stuff if you make YouTube videos or you know you make Instagram reels, stuff like that. But there's very few companies that make quality stuff that are made by fishermen that care about the fishermen and they care about getting the best product in your hands. So if you're someone like me that wants to set themselves up for success, they wanna use the best products on the market, they want to make sure that their tackle is ready to go, they're gonna be able to make that forecast, they're gonna be able to put the ultimate amount of pressure on a fish. Using products like this, absolutely gonna help them out. So if you guys are interested ever at any time, you guys can use my discount code, Ryan Mori. It's gonna save you guys some money on Ocean Devil's website. Or let's say you have a tackle shop or something like that here in the state of Florida and you wanna be one of the first tackle shops to have this in your store, just let me know. Shoot me a DM on Instagram, shoot me an email, anything like that, and I can link you up with the right people. But again, this is not the last you guys are gonna be seeing of this brand. Now what we gotta do is go fillet some fish. Welcome back to the world's most expensive fillet table. Just kidding, this is our garage. 
This is my girlfriend, Christina. She's in a lab coat because she just got done with a day of clinicals in the hospital. I am in my lab coat, which is a pair of Grunnens. And this is a black drum wearing nothing. But we're gonna flay him up. Also gonna flay up one of those Pompano. Take you guys along for the ride. So let's get into now, it. Now, this little guy is pretty much gonna look like any snapper species, or gonna fillet like any snapper species. Bigger scales, white meat, bloodline, pretty self-explanatory on the clean. But like I talked about in the video already, these fish, when they're big, get worms. And I'm not talking just a little bit of worms, they get a ton of worms, which is why I've elected not to keep a big one. And you know, I don't actually know if I caught a big one in this video. Got a couple more days of fishing, but we're doing the clean and cook right now. So maybe I didn't catch one, maybe I didn't. You guys know better than I do at this point. This guy, definitely very appreciative to eat. And every time I've eaten these, they've honestly been better than redfish to me. One of my favorite eating fish, especially at this size. You know, in that, it, basically anything under 28 inches in these species, delicious. And this one, like 17, 18 incher, Absolutely great. So starting off with that initial cut, just work back towards the spot or back towards the spine. Clean off those scales. Then just work our knife on that backbone down the edge of the fish. Just kind of starting that cut. I kind of break through down here, separate it out. Again, get those scales off, those six scales. Man, they dull your knife quick. I was using this knife earlier and I was like, oh gosh, this thing is destroyed. So I just touched her up with a whetstone. Working a little bit better now. I'm gonna stay working back towards the edge of that filet, separating that meat slowly. And it's kind of feeling it like anything else. I am by no means a professional filet at all but it's honestly hilarious to me the amount of people on the internet that act like they are. Once we get to this point, let's see if you guys can come in here and see this. Bang, bang. There we are. Now that we're off that, we can hop over the rib cage. I like to leave the rib cage on because something small like this, man, I'm just not going to be able to get any meat out of it. So left the rib cage on the carcass, all those little bones right there. I'm not going to have to deal with that when I separate the filet. Something I've started to do as I've gotten older is kind of clean the filet table more in between or in the middle of what I'm doing, whether that's rinsing it off at a on the water filet table or just paper toweling something off if I'm here in my garage. Keeping it clean, not slimy, the fish isn't sliding around. You have a lot better control and you don't end up missing on a lot of your cuts. Other side, same exact thing. Cut back towards the head. Spin them around. Bam, push through at the end. Separate at the tail. And work my way down. Are. Bust through those pin bones, and then go over the top of the rib cage. It's very easy to break through the rib cage, and I do it all the time still. So don't feel bad if you're flaying a fish and you do. Bang! There we go. We have our black drum carcass. Sorry, it looks a little bright. Got the lights on a little too bright in here, but got our black drum carcass. Now all we gotta do is knock this skin off real quick. So just slide the fillet pretty close to me on the edge of the fillet table. Get the knife pretty darn flat, flat as I can. And then I'll just follow the back of the knife with my back hand, with my left hand. And these guys skin pretty easily, like any snapper species. Say that, could mess it up at any time. It's just how it goes. Oh, I'm good. Now we just gotta remove those pin bones. Feel for them with my finger. There we go. There we go. Get 
One black drum fillet going in the Ziploc. Two black drum fillets going in the Ziploc. It's looking pretty dang good. And not one sign of worms. Welcome to the kitchen. So first step is we're going to prepare a little pompano appetizer. So I'm actually just gonna thinly slice this pompano and start laying her on a platter in just real small pieces. Now this is gonna be a raw fish presentation that I have never done with pompano. Don't think I've ever eaten pompano raw. If I have, no one told me I did. But I have done this with Spanish mackerel before. And with Spanish mackerel, it was fire. So I think it's gonna be pretty good with pompano as well. This part is kind of tedious, but it also makes you feel like a pro when you actually get it to look good on a platter. First thing, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of lemon on top of our pompano. Get a little bit of acidity added. This is also gonna slightly cook it. Not crazy though, because we're gonna eat this in just a second. We're gonna go in with some capers. I drained out some of the vinegar that was already in the jar because we don't want too overpowering of a vinegar base. Spread these out with my hands a little bit more. Next, gonna go in with some extra virgin olive oil, just kind of eyeballing this. A little bit of Parmesan cheese. And when you say a little bit of Parmesan, you really mean a lot of Parmesan. And lastly, just a little bit of fresh basil sprinkled on top. There we have our little Pompano Crudo, whatever you want to call it. Served with some crackers. You gonna try it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see you try it. It's got a lot of things that you don't like, so I'm interested yeah. to see. Mm. <laughs> Boom. And... Hmm. We actually took down all of our Christmas decorations. Except for the bows on the cabinets. Are you gonna keep those all year long? Uh, maybe. <laughs> so I would say that that's as good as anything. I think with a fresh raw fish, especially something that's firm, pompano worked. <clears throat> the mackerel was actually really, really good. You can do this recipe with. It's a great little appetizer. And everyone that I've ever served it to, I remember I served it to like eight people over on the west coast of Florida, absolutely has loved it. When Christina smelled the capers and realized that there was vinegar in them, she like literally went Ugh! and didn't think she was gonna like it at all. But you haven't stopped eating them. So don't knock it till you try it. The combination of the acidity from the lemon, the taste of the vinegar. What are you, what are you, what are you? My parking ticket. We, it's not a parking, it's a warning. It's not a parking ticket. This girl's never got a ticket in her life. She thinks she got a ticket, but she got a warning. <laughs> Got a hot pan, just going in with a little bit of olive oil. Then I have a one whole yellow onion, loosely diced. Hopefully I can make most of it into the pan. Also got one whole yellow pepper that I'm just dicing. Into the pan we go. Yeah, you know, I was never sure if. Doing this with fresh garlic makes a difference over minced garlic, and I'm sure some like real chefs and real cooks would swear that like, you know, the garlic out of a jar is the worst thing ever made and you can only use fresh, but I don't know, man. I've never been able to tell. Just gonna deglaze the pan with a little bit of white cooking wine. 
gonna bring up all of those charred bits, of onions, pepper, garlic. That wine is gonna slowly cook down. Alcohol will cook away, and we'll just have the sugars of the wine, which will give the entire blend a little bit more sweetness. We have three diced plum tomatoes going in. Those will release a bunch more juice too. Okay, now for our star of the show, we have our black drum. Made sure that there was no scales on it. You're just gonna go lightly season, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, little paprika, and last but not least, a little garlic powder. If I did this properly, I would have cooked my fish in the same pan that all of the vegetables are in right now and taken it out while, before it was actually done. But I messed up, forgot to cook the fish, so we're cooking it in a separate pan. Got a little bit of butter in this pan and I'm just gonna go in with our fish. And again, I'm not gonna cook it pretty much all the way through. I'm just trying to get a little brown on one side of this fish. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna, tra <laughs> gonna transfer these guys over. Got a nice golden brown on one side. And get them in to this nice little stew of vegetables. I've done it before where I just cook the fish in the liquid. Um, but I think getting a little bit of that pan sear on one side Gets a lit, brings out a little bit more flavor in the fish. And we're gonna allow the fish to cook the rest of the way in all these juices and everything like that. So there really should be no dryness to it at all. So we have a plate of farro, basically kind of like a rice, a little bit denser, a little bit more protein in it. And Christina just is getting sick of rice, so we made farro instead. We have our poached, kind of poached, black drum with all of those delicious vegetables going in there, right on top. You want any juice on your plate? Mm, a little. A little bit of juice. We'll get a little bit of juice. Come over to my plate. One black drum, two black drum, and I'm just gonna pile some of that on there. Bang. That is looking good. And the finishing touch is a little bit of fresh basil sprinkled on top. This is what uh, date <laughs> night looks like on a weeknight. <laughs> When it's literally 70 degrees in here and Christina's cold. Oh wait, no, it's not even 70. It's 74 degrees. What are you doing? Freezing, Why are you cold? I'm sick. No, you're not I'm sick. Like flower making era. Am I supposed to watch me at some eight? <laughs> no, stop that. <laughs> You're not even looking at the camera either. You're looking <laughs> off to the side like you're like reading a teleprompter. You can ask. Okay, so I absolutely demolished mine. Christina slowly working through hers. She might actually be getting sick, but would you have me make it for you again? Yes, it was good. It was good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I thought it was delicious. The fish never gets dried out when you do that, and it's been a long time since I've done that. If you guys remember the last video that I did these two recipes, I want you to comment them down below because if you guys have seen those videos, you've been kicking around this channel for a while. I also wanna thank you all for sticking all the way to the end of the video. And if you're interested in more awesome fishing videos, I think YouTube wants you guys to watch this one right here, right above Christina's head. See you guys over.